Hi my friend, in this video we're going to be making underground tech house drums inspired by Josh Butler's song Cedar. And we're going to find out if we can do this in under 45 minutes by using the 80-20 rule of tech house drum production. What you're listening to right now is the song that we'll be working on and what you're looking at right now is the Ableton project file that we'll be working on. In particular, we'll focus on this drum group right here. We're going to go over things in order that I actually created them so that when you're building up drums for your own songs, you can follow along with this process. Uh, make sure you stick around to the end of the video. We'll be doing a full recap of that 80-20 rule so that you can apply it to your own music and finish songs faster. And because this only took about 45 minutes or so for me to recreate the drums here. And if we zoom out here, this whole track has been arranged, mixed, mastered, and is ready to go. Uh, and it only took about five hours this week for me to complete that. So if you want help finishing songs fast, just like this, I've also made you a free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that I use to completely finish one song like this every single week. Visit the link that's on screen now or in the description to grab the ultimate song finishing toolkit for free. And if you want to take things to the next level, you can also find a link to this video's project files in the description as well. But with that said, let's jump into this. All right, all right, all right. So when it comes to the drums for this one, uh, it basically sounds like some pretty straightforward, almost kind of minimal sounding drum sounds. So quite a lot of tight sounds. Um, and actually I believe like what I'm mostly heard while going through this process is there, there's not really any kind of open hat either. And if there is, it's like, a, it's really, really tight. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go over this. I guess first I'll just stop yapping and you can just listen to the drums by themselves for a moment. That's, I'll listen to what those kind of sound like. What I'll do next is I'm gonna mute everything so that we can slowly build up all these tracks in order that I created them. The first place that I always start with is the kick. And before that, a really, really important key here is to drop the song that you wanna reference into your, um, into your project, just like this. And what I'll usually do is turn it off so that it's not playing and then map the S key on my keyboard to the solo button here. So you can flick back and forth. And what's important about this is that way what you can be doing is setting the right pattern so making sure like the kicks playing at the right time all the drums are playing at the right time as you're as you're building out your track and then also flicking back and forth between the reference and what you're doing so that you can choose the right sounds and then third is to flick back and forth like that so that you can choose the right volumes and that's really going to be one of the main 80 20 rule keys here so when it comes to this kick um let's take a look at what we got going on so in terms of the pattern um what we have is just the standard uh kind of four on the floor pattern on the one two three four just simple like that um if you listen back and forth that's clearly what's going on other than this kind of like cool little fill at the end that looks a little like this just like that so in terms of this sound, the way that I was able to choose the right sound is what I did is I went over and found a spot in the song where like just the kick was playing. So if we go over here, right here, what I did is I just snatched like a little bit of the kick. Uh, I cut, like cropped it and then pro pressed command J to consolidate it. And then once it's consolidated, what you can do is then um, click on it and go over to show in browser. And then it'll show what you've just consolidated. So just that kick right here. And then what you can do is press this little button here in Ableton 12, and it will show you a bunch of similar uh, drum sounds just like that. And so then what I did is uh, I went through that process to basically create like a little drum rack of similar sounds here. So we have all, all these different sounds. Oh, let me uh, get it back on here. We have all these different sounds that uh, sounded similar. And um, that's basically how I landed on this kick sound. So let's just jump back to the loop here. Um, so super cool way in Ableton 12. Ableton 12, I don't like almost anything that they've added other than a similar sound thing, but it's so cool and so useful, especially when using reference tracks like that. So big tip right there. What I've done is I'm using two kick sounds. Um, I'm not even 100% sure. Okay, this is what I did. So we have this first kick sound right here. So we're using a kick sound from um, Rocket Powered Sound, who's also sponsoring this video, by the way. More on that later. So we have this kick sound here, 
and then um we have one that's just playing fully like there's no eq on this one and then i've added in this additional one here let me just that's how it sounds on its own it's just adding a little bit of extra knock and some of this top end very subtle and so what i've done there is just in the simpler device for this one i've used like the inbuilt filter to remove up to actually i have no idea it doesn't actually tell you does it oh 330 hertz so just getting rid of a lot of that low end in the main part of the body so it's just like the top end so altogether it's a subtle but adds a little bit something to the top end so that's it once like the the pattern has been selected and the sound has been selected in comparison to the reference track next thing is to set the volume so the main way i usually do this is flick back and forth like this almost like on beat trying to get the same volume um and uh kind of the same fullness the same body of it and that's kind of the main thing other than that in terms of any processing uh, running into a little bit of drum bus here. So adding a little bit of saturation here, uh, lowering some of the high end with this damp functionality. And then what I've done is I set the frequency to the key of the song and then uh, brought up some of this boom and brought down the decay a little bit. So let's listen without it. And then with it, uh -oh, let's get to the beginning with it, without it. So it's cool. I've been really digging the drum bus a lot lately and it adds a lot of fullness to that sound. With that said, then we'll move on to the next element, which are these hats. We'll look at the MIDI. And so what's going on here is it's just like the standard uh, hat pattern. So uh, every other beat on the off beat there uh, or on the off beat, then I've set it up so that one hit is a stronger the second one is not as strong if we look at the velocities down here it just adds a little bit of humanization to it and what i've done is i've layered on two hats um we can have a quick lesson so this is an open hat sound and i've uh, transposed it up a little bit uh and then i'm layering it on with this other sound here which is clearly this hi-hat closed one it's clearly the main sound uh, i don't know where i found it but i had to adjust like the uh the start point a little bit and I transpose it up to semitones. Uh, I feel like that higher, tighter sound is like kind of what we're going for here with this kind of minimal drum sound is what I would kind of describe it as. But it's pretty simple. So just a little bit of layering there going on. With the layering, as you can see, at least when I do it, uh, there's usually like the one sound that's the main sound and then the, the other sound is like secondary, just adding a little bit of like something to the little bit of the je ne sais quoi pas, as they say, uh, to the... Uh, to the the layer there so then in terms of any processing just removing a little bit of the low end here with the chan standard channel strip we'll go over this a little bit more in some of the other tracks but um that's really it here because then the main thing is trying to get the similar sound trying to get the similar volume there's his my hat might be a little bit louder but um yeah pretty close there um because i do actually do have another like layer that we'll be adding on there so with that said let's now take a look at the next thing that i added which are these claps And so in terms of like the pattern, it's very just like standard snare and clap positioning. So it's on the two and the four of the, of the, of the bar here. Um, and then in terms of the sound, uh, what I did, I didn't do any, I don't think I did any kind of similar sound thing. I just found a bunch of different claps, dropped them in here, and then um, ended up with this one, which is from Rocket Powered Sound, this back off clap. And um, what's actually cool about this is I did do some funky stuff here. Uh, so let's have a look. Uh, so we're just removing a bit of the low end, making sure that there's, like, there's no muddy overlapping frequencies. We don't need that in the clap. Uh, but then what I added was this cool like phaser flanders. So let me turn it off for a second. So with it off, it's just kind of a cool standard clap, but with it, it's kind of moving in like, kind of almost like, filtering in and out and what i've done is play with the settings a little bit but then what i did is i added also an lfo so the and attach it to the warmth here as well as to the feedback so if we open up the lfo we can see there's two mappings to it and then set up different like um like depths to it so that it's slowly changing the phaser 
uh, settings as well over time, which adds even more movement on top of what like the phaser is already doing. So I think I can kind of hear that a little bit in like the drum sound. I thought there's some really cool little tricks going on in this Josh, Josh Butler tune. Um, so we maybe jump over to here. I'm not sure if you can fully hear it. Maybe it's more in here. I feel like I could hear some kind of movement or either it's not actually in there and um, I was just in, like kind of got like the juices, creative juices tingling uh, or it is in the track. I'm not 100% sure, but I felt like I was hearing something kind of cool and unique going on in that kind of area. Uh, but with that said, and then standard like clicking back and forth, kind of almost on time like this and trying to get the similar sound similar volumes it's kind of the main thing let's move on to the next element that i added where things do get pretty freaking cool here which is the snare so let's have a look and listen So it's pretty cool. I think actually I want to jump to the beginning because there's what's something really cool about this and you'll see this even more when we get into the synths and the arrangement videos, but there's kind of like two pairings of each element. So like there's a snare pattern that plays at the beginning of the track and then in the middle of the track, it changes this more complex one. What I want to just do is just jump over to here and let's have a look and listen to the initial snare that comes in. So I think in the original tune, he's actually using a clap for this. So basically what, what it is, is if we start off with like the, the main snare that's being used here, for the most part, it's like similar to the clap. So it's on the two and the four, the two and the four, but then there's these like cool little flams. So there's like, like that and like little extra little ghost notes being added. And then like a little fill almost near the end right here which is really cool. So the way that I started was I just started with like the, on the two and the four, just like this, and then like started listening for the extra little flammy bits and then added those in. And then something I like to do that I, I don't know if, if like a lot of people are doing this, but I like to like switch the sounds so that it's like different, different snare samples are being triggered, which I think adds a little bit of like humanization and like uniqueness and just some change. But um, then I want to jump over to this board. So like that's kind of the simplified version. Then I copy that over and then what we have is in like the middle main drop, there's a lot more activity going on. So let's have a look and listen again. So basically it's these little extra little fills at the beginning, just like that and again. And basically I was just like listening for it. It's like, so did something similar, to, wanted to kind of deviate a little bit, don't want to fully rip off the tune. Um, but that's kind of the idea, there's like these cool little, you can hear it's more of a clap sound. So yeah, there's something going on like that. And basically what I did is I did it the first time, then duplicated it over the second time, and just kind of changed out some of the, the, uh, the snares that are being triggered, uh, how to do the same thing again, and then again at the end, kind of made some uh, changes as well. This way, there's kind of just like this changing happening over time, a little bit of like a call and response. Um, super cool stuff there. Then uh, in terms of any processing, what's going on here, standard channel strip stuff. So this is the channel strip that I have that loads up onto every one of my audio MIDI tracks so that I can do some quick adjustments, mostly using my ears. That's why everything's in racks um, and kind of mixes you go super quickly. So first thing is removing a bunch of the lows, making sure that's not conflicting with like the bass and the kick. And then the only other thing I'm using in this one is this transient shaper, which is the free kilohertz transient shaper, which is adjusting the transients of the hit. So I'm bringing up the attack a bit. So it's emphasizing the, the initial hit. So making it sound a little bit more punchy, I would say. And then dialing back some of the sustain, which is removing the part after the transient. So it's making the sound a bit tighter. Um, but other than that, just mostly trying to go for like volumes. Volumes is the main thing here. So move on to the next element, which is the open hi-hat. Let's take a look and listen. So what we're looking at here is similar to the, uh, the first hi-hat pattern. This is, um, it's basically just on the off beats here. 
and then I have one hitting harder, one hitting softer for the same humanization factor, flipping back and forth. Now, I think our, that open high could maybe be a little higher, uh, maybe transposed up, I mean. But um, but now the, the the volume of the hats is a lot more similar, I would say, with the addition of this. So I'm using this hi hat open good, which I have no idea where that comes from. But um, uh, I just brought back the. I had to bring up the the start point a little bit, and then I also added in the fade out, so it's just tightening the sound a little bit. Um, what else is there anything else cool going on here? Check out the channel strip. So just moving some of the lows getting rid of this, some of this junk here that's like really not doing much um and that's really it this is just an additional element to like add that extra emphasis and it's also a good arrangement trick because you can see here at some point there's we don't have that open hat and then we can bring it in and out uh to add a little bit of energy throughout the arrangement but we'll get into that in the next video so i would say for the most part that's pretty much the drums um this is usually what I would call like kind of the core elements of the drums, getting like the one shots in place for your kick, your hats, your claps and snares. Then I don't think I heard this in the original track. So um, this is what I usually like to do. I usually like to layer in different top loops. So basically drum loops without the kick or drum breaks. And that's a cool way to add some like extra character and vibe and some subtle complexity to your drum loops. So I'm gonna go over what I added in here. The first one is this top loop here. Bring up the volume a bunch. And then you can see this is where I had it with the volume. Super subtle. It's adding like a little bit of extra kind of like almost like you can hear like the extra ghost notes and like real drummer vibes kind of coming through very subtly. So it's me meant to just like add a little bit of extra character on top of or like underneath the core sounds that we built out so basically just found some cool drum loops and uh uh whatnot i think it was in slice and splice one of the things that i like to do here is uh when you have the clip on transients and change it to the right what you can do is dial this back here and it'll basically tighten up the sound a bit which is a nice way to have it kind of blend into the core uh, your core sounds a lot more in terms of any processing removing a bunch of the lows to make sure it's not interrupting like the kick and um, making sure that our main kick is, is shining through and then shelving out some of the highs which can be a more natural way to kind of tame some of the highs and then what we're running to next is the transient shaper so what we're doing is pulling down the sustain again very similar to what we did on the clip level here and that's again kind of tightening up the sound a bit which is helping it blend in uh, with the rest of the drums then we're running it into the the sidechain little component that I have here. So I'm usually, I like to set it up like this. It's an Ableton Live device with kind of like that LFO tool shape using Shaper, uh, running at quarter notes. And usually the kick drum is moving at quarter notes. And then this is just modulating uh, a, a gain utility. So this way you can get that sidechain pumping sound, which is mainly used for vibe and character. It's a very cool dance music thing, but it's also um, helps make sure there's room for the kick to, to shine through. And this way you can just dial it in with your, it's like taste instead of like routing compressors and all this and dialing, getting into like the, like the plug in a bunch. So you just dial into taste and move on, which I really like. Then running into Ableton saturation device, adding two decibels of saturation. This is kind of adding some body and fullness to the sound a little bit. And then lastly, running it uh, into this width plugin, which is the free Polyverse Wider plugin. Again, similar to the transient shaper, I've just mapped some of the core knobs so that I don't have to keep opening up the device and I don't have to keep like, like getting distracted by the UI. I can just add in some width. And um, the width here is basically pushing it a bit to the left and right, uh, making some space in the middle for the, all the other core elements there and uh, adding like a nice stereo sound to it. And then the last one that we're gonna go over is this next drum break. And I'm gonna bring up the volume a bunch so you can actually hear it. This is a standard uh, Amen, 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 whatever break. I think I found it on Splice also. Um, it's just adding, again, a little bit of extra character. Uh, if we look at the clip, 
I'm not doing anything there. Let's have a look at the channel strip. Um, removing a bunch of the lows, a lot of the lows you can see, uh, and shelving out a bit of the highs, trying to blend it in a little bit. A little bit of uh, transit shaping, removing some sustains to tighten it up. A little bit of side chain for pumping and making room for the kick. A little bit of width to kind of push things to the left and right, add some stereo. And then I added that same phaser flanger that we have on the clap. So it's kind of having that same kind of movement and sound that's familiar in the core sound, kind of tying it into the, the core sound as well, since there's that kind of familiarity. These two, I would say, are probably not really in like the tune. Um, this is something that I like to do, like I mentioned, to like add some uniqueness, uh, add some uh, subtle, subtle complexity, and a little bit of extra groove and character and that kind of humanization extra element that is really hard to program in with like MIDI like this. Um, but yeah, I think that's a pretty good rundown of the drums here. So what we'll do next is we'll hop into an 8020 overview of this so you can really dial this in with your own productions. Before we do that, I should also take a moment to mention that this video is sponsored by our good friends over at Rocket Powered Sound. What we're using in this um, project here is, what do we got? Uh, I think some some kicks. The kicks is kind of the fundamental sound of the drums, so that's an important one. I think we're using some hi-hats as well. Let's have a look. Uh, no hi-hats. I think claps we're using. Uh, yep, some claps and maybe the open hi-hat, no. What we're using in this one is the kicks and the claps, so some pretty core sounds, and it's from their ultimate sample pack, which has, is a pretty big, badass sample pack that has over a thousand sounds in it. Um, and if you'd like to grab a copy of that, what you can do is head over to the link on the description right now, or uh, make sure you head over to the website in the link in the description or on screen now, and use the code ultimate best friends to get 30% off of that. Um, yeah, it's a pretty badass sample pack, and definitely thank you a lot for them for sponsoring this. If you grab this project files as well uh, in the description, then you'll also get access to the RPS sounds that they were so kind to give us for this video. But with that said, yeah, thanks again to our RPS for sponsoring this video. And with that said, let's jump into the 80-20 rule for this one. Hi, my friend, Matt from Best Friends Club here. And if you've been paying attention, then you probably figured out what the 80-20 rule is when it comes to building out your drums. The goal here is to get 80% of the results with only 20% of the time, energy, or effort. And because the first key to the 80-20 rule for drums is to use a reference track, we're making sure that we're effortlessly hitting 80% of a very professional sounding track. In particular, we focus on nailing the pattern, sound selection, and the volume compared to the reference track so that we keep things fast and focused as we're building out our drums. The second key of the 80-20 rule here is to mix as you go in an extremely streamlined way by only focusing on the volume as well as a simple repeatable channel strip for each track that we're adding to our drums. The third and final key is to repurpose your old project files and to build up a suite of powerful templates, Ableton racks, and one knob effects that you've personalized and curated over time. If you'd like to get a head start by downloading all the racks, templates, and all the files that you've seen me use in the Ableton project file for this video, or if you'd just like to take a closer look at any of the techniques or tracks you saw me work on in this video at your own pace, you can find a link to this video's project files on screen now and at the second link that's in the YouTube description. I'm recreating a different song from the Beatport top charts every single week and making the project files available to anyone who wants them. You'll also get access to a private Discord where you can ask me and the community questions as well as share tracks for feedback. If you or your music are not quite ready for a shot in the arm like that, I've also made you a completely free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that have helped me figure out how to completely finish one new song each and every single week. And you can grab that free ultimate song finishing toolkit by visiting the first link that's in the YouTube description here. However, if you just feel like staying on YouTube for now, that's totally fine. Save that link for later and check out this playlist of videos where I remake drums from other songs from the beatwork top charts. Or if you want to take what you learned in this video to the next level, definitely check out this video right here.